Hello! When it comes to using the miter saw, I've developed a pretty bad habit, and that's trying to cut small pieces with it. Now you can see if I wanted to cut this piece in half, I can put it up and it's pretty stable on the fence. But when I bring the blade down, my fingers are awfully close to it. It's even worse if I'm fooling around trying to cut the end off a piece like this, when it doesn't even sit good on the fence. So that's something i got to stop doing. Now the obvious solution is to simply clamp the piece down onto the table and use a handsaw. That works good, of course, but that means that I have to take the car to the garage and set the table up. I have this other work table off to the side that i got my drill press on, but it's kind of awkward for me to do cutting over here because I'm right-handed, and you can see that it's no way for me really to clamp this down and cut. One option I can use is to use one of these miter boxes. That way I can put it on like this and put the piece in and cut. The thing I don't like about this is that the saw is such a loose fit in it. So I want to see if I can come up with something better. I'm going to start off by cutting some pieces of 2x4. Now it isn't really critical, but I like to cut off these rounded edges on the 2x4 so I have a nice clean edge on both sides. And I'm going to do that on the table saw. Now I don't need a very long piece of wood for my project, but I never try ripping a short piece like this. It's much better to use a longer piece. That way I'll be able to maintain good control of it until it gets through to as far as the ribbing knives. If I try to do that with this short piece, I've got a real good chance that it's going to want to kick back. So I've got my fence set up, and I've got my feather board set up. So before I do any cutting, of course, I want to put my safety glasses on. Something else, since it's winter time, I've got this parabolic heater going in the garage. So just in case, I'm going to shut that off. I don't want to trip the breaker. So I end up with something like this, nice square sides instead of this rounded over corners. Next I'm going to cut off two pieces two and a half inches long. Next I'm going to take this piece of quarter inch MDF and cut it in half. That's going to give me two pieces that are two inches by about two and an eighth. So I guess I'll use the miter box. These little pieces are going to attach onto the back of the blocks like so. Before I mount that on there, I also want to take and mark the center point on one of the blocks. So we end up with them like this. I've set up my cross cut sled, so now I'm going to cut a 6 inch wide strip from this piece of 3 quarter inch plywood.
Then I'm going to cut it to 9 inches long. I've marked the center of the edge of this board for some screw holes. They're going to be at 3 eighths of an inch and 2 and 5 eighths of an inch in from each end. Next, I'm going to countersink these holes. On the end of the board that now has these countersunk screw holes in it, I'm going to cut off a three-quarter inch wide strip. First, I'm going to put a little reference line across so I can line up these boards the same way again afterwards. So now I have this piece with the holes in it and this other piece with the holes in the same place. Now I'm going to take these holes that are through the strip and drill them out big enough so that a screw can turn freely within the hole. So now I can very carefully screw this strip back onto the end of the board. I say very carefully because it's easy to split this plywood. Before I screw this on though, I'm going to take these blocks that I made earlier and put them on the board like this. So I end up with this board that's now got this quarter inch space in it that I can adjust by turning the screws in or out. These blocks are going to fit in like so. Now one of them is going to be screwed in place, but this one I want to be able to adjust a little bit. Oh, I've just noticed a problem. This screw is in the way of this moving over far enough. That's no big deal. All I'm going to do is go over to the sander and take a little bit off of this uh, back plate. Its only purpose is to keep this piece from twisting. There we go, back in business. This side is going to be fixed in place, so I'm going to go ahead and screw that down. So now this side is fixed in place. This other side, I want to be able to have a little bit of adjustment in it. Now this is for a couple of reasons. One is that different saws are different thicknesses. But the main reason is that I live in a rather cold climate. So if I make something that's going to be a good tight fit on the saw in winter time, come summer it's going to be too tight. So I need to have some adjustment in there. So what I'm going to do is line this up so it's approximately where I want it and then with that center mark that I made way back at the start I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole all the way through both pieces. Once I have the quarter inch hole drilled, I can put a larger bit, in this case 9 seconds, 
and drill the hole in this piece a little bit bigger. I've installed a quarter inch carriage bolt into the base. Washer and a wing nut. Now I'm able to adjust the thickness of that gap. I've cut some spacers from a piece of 1 by 2 On both ends of each piece, I've drilled some quarter inch holes. So now I'm going to take these and attach them onto this base piece like so, one on each side. So now the spacers are attached onto the bottom. I want to set up my primary work area for this jig over on this bench. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this down about where I want it. And now using these quarter inch holes, I'm going to drill some holes into the top of this work table. I don't really care much about putting holes into this, it's got a bunch of holes in it already. Now I slip some quarter inch dowels into the holes. And when I line it up, just push the dowels down into the holes and it holds the whole mess onto the bench nice and secure. If I want to use it over here on the table instead, I just push the dowels back up and I can either clamp it down or if I push these two back dowels down, I can use it this way as well. I've adjusted the gap so it's a nice tight fit on my favorite saw. So now it's time to try it out. works just fine. When it's not being used, it pops right off. I can store it up here on the shelf. Should come in pretty handy. Thanks for watching.